I'll start by reading from Field, then I'll read some newer work. Can everyone hear me okay? Is everything all right? Cool. So Field is, a, I think of as a serial work. It's numbered one, two, three. When I get nervous, I forget that you all know numbers probably already. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna not read the numbers. I'll just bounce around. These white skirts and orange sweaters I want in the feeding mart while my vegetable parts bloom in the common way, a grackle in the garden roost, the tall women washing hands or eyeing turnips, the saddened powers we rub so economically. In one version of things, Alarum is my name, Unkempt and handled, I am horse, I am saddled, I am a broken horse. <coughs> For some re reason, reading this this time right here and now, I suddenly remembered I used to work a retail job at a mall in Southern California. I remembered these white skirts and orange sweaters I want in the feeding mart. And I remembered sitting there eating a veggie dog, corn dog, a hot dog on a stick. That's probably what that poem's about. <laughs> there is nothing funny about this. You alone on a tip that is the tip of world teamed in, no bigger than a good-sized fist, your groundling heart fissioned in round. Listen, one day you will be all ear, a you alone in a field of mare. I am older and the same than the names you gave. This is the course, a tran, a field, a corpse. When ambience accidentally presents as a girl sweating at my teat, I wanted to love her antecedents, two power lines cut vertical in the grass, my lyric untied in her hand, clinical like spring. Is there anything you love, sis, more than an antecedent? It is pleasing to understand labor as a field, a felt passed through. I would see you green in that land. When I first started working on field, I had this idea that it was gonna be very like pronouncement oriented, almost like a treatise or something. And it went a very different direction, but occasionally a poem or a bit of a poem remains of that sort of earlier thought. And this is one of them, I think. Gender is not the tran organ. Gender is, yes, a hemorrhage. The name script and the state script proceed, lapping the milk in my sacks. Gender like all surface, is a female depository room. In that cloud, Moses wept, and we expect a law. His face like light, and our bodies golden in vaginoplasticity. If you ever get down my mountain, he said, purge me with hyssop, offer my bullock on the altar. A tran is nothing but the sense of some burning. I alone have escaped to tell you this. Have a sip of water. Ooh. 
reading's really cool, and I'm really thankful to be here reading to you all. Uh, but one of the horrible things about reading is you sometimes get to watch or listen to yourself. And there was one reading I had where I was reading with someone else, and it was a Q&A. I, like, drank my water. I just reached over and grabbed their water and drank their water. <laughs> horrible, horrible thing to do. Had no idea. And it went up, like, two years later. So I was like, oh, wow, I'm really sorry to this person <laughs> two years ago who I took their water. Being graceless, my breasts folding for the first, the cruelest rhetoric, forgiveness, and their big brown beards like pubic slug, I must remember, please keep your hands to yourself. I mean this ontologically. Nature is somewhere else. And speaking of that early pronouncement-oriented language, uh, this poem is the first poem that I wrote that uh, remains in the manuscript. I had this idea, because some of them are prose blocks and some of them aren't, that it would start as prose blocks and like slowly break down, decompose or something. It was a bad idea. It didn't work. So then I rearranged it. But this is a pure prose block, number one in my mind at a certain time. Being tran is a unique kind of organ. I am speeching materially. I am speeching about heredity. A tran enters through the hole. The hole gloams in the linden. A tran enters ether like a moth. While Tran precedes essence, her form is contingent on the field. The manor sits cis within a field. We speech into the ether. While the moth blooms, the moth blooms in the yucca. I met earlier today with some students, and one of the things I talked about was how I really like cliches. The trouble is getting them to work. And I really wanted to write a trans butterfly poem because I thought it was like really obvious. <laughs> and so that was my way to do it. The moth blooms. Sometimes people have thoughts things they cling to, attachments, violent things, that if all they did was look in front of them, uh, their position would seem so silly. Pox in the pewter again. Gash in that syntax. A tram, her name, some flint already in the ash. I can't stop writing Tran, her double name. The boys coal into a natural row. The garden they flatten when they pass to what? This morning, I saw you, a bell spilt in a field. Only there was no field, and a cathedral is not its bell, but some ringing, no name but to reckon with the ringing. My breasts groan, a bell I tend, and it's stunning, a thing, before it's gone. I care so much about the word I can't read. It marks my back when I pass with a ribbon in my hair. Under the principled sky, there is no vulnerability, only what protrudes and these lions licking my wound, expecting to find a wound. There is history in this wood.
I'll read one more uninterrupted, then I'll give you a little humorous anecdote <laughs> to keep us going. When the kingdom came to me, remember the extremity of him? Or were you busy bopping gophers and scouring votes? When the deposit turned coal, when cavity meant flat like sea, when the shape my surface so neatly curls and vaginates me. A child is what ideology looks like, existingly. And I can't tell you how happy I am today in the garden, my tightened mouth, a thousand shut-in bees, the linden timely in its gloam. I couldn't shit for weeks, a supple red thing and alone. Okay, so first sad, then, then amusing anecdote. Okay, sad. Uh, one of the things that I like about this poem, can I say that? Can you say you like your own work? I'm looking to you, David. <laughs> Clearly you're the authority, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, is, uh, I, it's hard to write about things that happened long ago without appealing to some kind of like narrative of healing or growth. I find um, you want to say like, oh, this thing happened and I'm better, obviously. But some things like, I don't know, I'll never get better. There's lots of stuff I'll never get over. Uh, I don't know, I'll never get over the times my brothers are rude to me when I was little or whatever, no matter how great our relationship might be, right? Um, I still love them. And yeah, so I was trying to think of how to write about things when when was a child, uh, and remember the scenes when I was a child, and remember how things were interpreted when I was a child. And so a number of images came to mind while I was trying to think through this. One of them is bopping gophers, the humorous one. <laughs> so I gotta sit down the book. I'm gonna do a mime. You need the book sit down for the mime. So when I was around age seven, we lived in this apartment complex in Southern California. So it was like a, kind of like a rectangle of, and in the middle was like a little garden. I guess it was supposed to be like communal, but it wasn't like a real garden, right? It was like apartment complex garden. So it was like a tree and some rocks, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there was a gophers who lived there. Uh, or at least I remember them being gophers. Um, and we had this dog, Charity, who was really mean, horrible name for, for, the, for that dog. Um, and Charity would sit there on this little patch, with these little gopher holes, and wait for the gopher to pop up. And then like with the right paw, smack the gopher. <laughs> and the left paw acted as like kind of leverage, you know, to launch the gopher up through the sky. <laughs> So this is one thing I remember around that age. And then the second one that I remember, also humorous, I hope, uh, was Chuck E. Cheese. Do you all know Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, where a kid can be a kid. That pizza was really bad, wasn't it? Really bad pizza. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I remember one of the first times I went there is for a birthday party of someone, um, I think from my Sunday school. Uh, that's why I made friends. Um, why not? Uh, and I went to play that like whack-a-mole game, you know, where the like, um, and I thought, well, this is silly. Um, if they, like, this is way too hard. If I go like this, you know, then they can't come up. Um, <laughs> And so I did that for, for a while, and I got a lot of tickets, and I was doing great. <laughs> Until they found out, and someone threw me out, <laughs> took my tickets. <laughs> Sometimes I remember, like, when I was little, right? And you think, yeah, no, like, I understand that. But then I picture me now, like, walking up to a seven-year-old and throwing them out of Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> like, how mean do you have to be to do that? But anyway, so that's kind of like a 
microcosm of the U.S., I think. <laughs> but when I was a child, I was so old. In my dreams, a girl, there being no pardon from the real, its form a dream, a girl. The field is an affect, yes, but what matters more than its fact? Factual the fold and its follow and bent day, mattering how we call a thing and what did we make then, being so tall, the day being old, some facts stunning the air. I wanted so much to speech the human things. I became the bird suit they sent me in. This is what makes us girls, thinning by the hour. There was an early draft of this that had a lot of vomiting. I think it all kind of disappeared. The poem's a little bit of a vomit poem, maybe. <laughs> the bit provides its horse. The rock provided a boy, blessing God. I wanted one secret, but for the rod in this my longish throat. I know no new way to speech this, the power of lions. <coughs> this next poem's a love poem. Speeching of trees from the inside, you can grow dear to one only from the inside. I took pride in what was dropped. When nothing was in sight, my pride was in your leaves where medallions could be. Two things I like about poems. What I like about this poem. Um, two things I like about poems that happen to be true in this poem. Uh, is I like how poems can get you to experience, to perceive something in a way that you hadn't experienced it before. It sort of show you a relationship between things that maybe you hadn't seen before. And then when you go back to see it, or perceive it, I should say, in, in real life, uh, it's there. You know, you can't unperceive it. Um, I remember when I was like seven, went to a museum to LACMA. Um, and at the back of LACMA at the time, and I think it's still there, is this large Alexander Calder sculpture, uh, if you're familiar. If not, it's like, <laughs> this was, I don't know, this was my impression. It looks like this um, big metal. Armish looking things, like a mobile, but standing um, with little colorful dots. And I remember seeing that, and there's trees all behind it, and beyond that is uh, this, these tar pits, um, and they smell like tar. Um, and something about seeing these, like medallions with the backgrounds of leaves, um, had me go like, oh, that's a tree, right? Like it's a sculpture of a tree. Um, and suddenly, and you know, I was like seven, this was my first experience of art. Like I remember that and I remember the fact that there were like boobs in the statue garden. That's all I remember of this trip. <laughs> um, so that was the age I was. Uh, but I remember that it stood out to me even more than, than the boobs. Um, 
Uh, yeah, and, and seeing these glinting things among the leaves. Uh, and that's one thing that art can do. Uh, and so now I think medallions often, especially around birch trees. And that's the other thing, is I didn't think that's where that poem was going. I didn't think it was going towards medallions, but that's where it wanted to go. And now I can see something that I couldn't have seen otherwise. This next poem um, I wrote uh, in, I guess that would have been, I always, I'm not great with dates, but I think it was like November of 2015. Um, uh, I was turning 27 that month, uh, and at the same time, people are sharing this statistic around on Facebook that I don't think corresponds to reality. People are always sharing some new updated, like, low life expectancy of trans women or whatever. Um, but this one said 27 was life expectancy of trans women, and again, I don't, I doubt that's accurate, and I doubt the usefulness maybe of trans women is like some sort of universal statistic that need not be broken down by race and so on. But um, this is what was being shared. And, uh, you know, all these people sharing it and being like, this is horrible. And uh, also that month I had three people who I knew who all passed, who are all trans women, um, two by their own hand and one who was murdered. And this is not atypical. Um, sometimes it feels like being trans is just collecting uh, people who have gone. Uh, but that was a hard month. And during that time I wrote this, uh, and it sort of changed the manuscript, me, the world. Tonight, I would love to write the moth in the garden, to grieve it, and as a matter of form, did you know, not a month goes by, a tran I know doesn't die. Just shy of 27, it's such a pleasure to be alive in this trembled suit you lent. Shock is a structured response, a word lost in the mouth of keepers. And you thumb at the moth, a dozen bees. I tethered these nights. I gathered so many trees. And then this last one I'll leave you with from Field. I'll read some new work after that. Um, is uh, something like hope after that. Um, something like hope. Uh, but hopefully not um, that sort of bad faith liberal hope of like, well, we just sit around and things get better, right? The arc of history tends towards justice, isn't it? Well, maybe I can't disagree with that. Uh, I don't know. I got no opinion. No opinion. Um, but uh, a sort of kind of active, active hope. A hope of if there were times that things were together before they were broken, or a time that people were together before they weren't. Uh, it's possible. Mm. And that sometimes the impossible becomes very possible all of a sudden. Mm. That kind of hope, an active hope. A hope you work at. Precious, every light, dying into a cindered heart, its ashy ring. I am an arrangement of strings, deferred what remains of a fire latent in any wood. And you, a rushed thing, singeing what you could of my dry strings. It's good. It means we can change. I'll stop at field for now. Get some more water. I'm going to read some new work. Um, okay. This first poem is three sections. They're untitled. I imagine a manuscript beginning with this, but we'll see. I always change my mind. 
I've, told, I've said like I'm done with this manuscript like five times now. <laughs> and then I scrapped two thirds of it. So maybe it just lives in this room for now. Like you, I looked for arbors to bend beneath, carried circuits, countless in the blood, myself from room to room to see a city square, pin calendars to a wall. And here I have heard of inventories of names, dead, unspoken, as if the first. I'd climb to see, but having climbed a little on, you reached a mountain, cut out the sky, to say nothing of frost, how words sculpt, sculpt midair. When I'd hear rustling, I'd inch slower down the colder mountainside. Where, out from under, story or carriage, pulled to the floor, it's pressed to. New growth, a mushroom up from bathroom tiles of a house where Xmas lights loom still, togethered, a yoke of violet overhead, and it could not matter less if you look. Where, up from floors, restingless, plotless, shelterless, green. Everything good comes from below. It's life. This is called a New York poem. A brain is like the heart, but stupid. We text in a subway corridor. No service, salt, hair, pollinate from forest ash, exiting, exhausted, sneezing blood through a park. A man quoting the raven beside, and we do not dare to speak of equivalents. Summer, grass from lawns, torn, dollars in the hands of children clinging to roots to pass time as exhausted the world heaves, speaks mournfully us. A crow pecking at our feet in daylight as we know not discover anything but discover between us gliding flockless an actual raven and a raven and a crow and a raven. Also today when meeting with students, I'm, I discovered, I mentioned uh, that, you know, sometimes teachers will be like, what are your go-to things in poems? Like, what are things you're relying too heavily on? And I realized for me, it's just squirrels. I put a squirrel in like every poem. So, so far, no squirrels. This poem has a squirrel. It's the one that wanted the squirrel. A fantasy. When I speak of a child every day and how little she matters, struggling to say the relation of mind to a brain, struggling against it, and how undiagnosable the concurrence of a squirreling, darting thing, not proceeding but lyric as I grope the branch it climbs, and carrying an umbrella as I was, and spilling buckets in my eyes, not interruption but the logic of concert, and lost the line I thought to write given as I am to misfiring, running through shrubs, mushrooms, and roots, almost screaming, and it seems so little to matter this morning in a room, within a room, in a country, given to misfiring, and losing as it does, not only words, and climbing the large oak tree at school, a backpack on my back full of rocks, and smelling as I did, unlike I should, and not speaking as I do, and no one would kick so high, I thought, of Zacchaeus when they took me down, groping as I was, at spilling rocks, 
and almost awake just out a dream today, I turn to you to say, I think I will go running. Then I'll read the start of a sort of sonnet cycle, I guess, that I started writing. Um, But I kind of was thinking of it as an anti-sonnet cycle. There's something about sonnets that always go towards the light. They always go towards clarity. And so this is called a night cycle. Day bore us for a time in cold light spoke clear of antagonism or its obfuscation. It offered firm edges. Now is the hour keys jangle in pockets and pockets that house keys still and geometric eyes of women and men shut before you who shut eyes earlier before a possum crawled up the tree to die or rest for a stretch. The yellow of leaves underneath and quivering Quite fundamental, the non-orientability of objects at night. We share this, a palace. We imagine and build, pigment by pigment, atop palaces of flesh. Each door opens to this palace, and each locks before each brief, unmutterable flash. And it's an incomplete cycle, so who knows if this order will last or if these poems will last. This is a poem I've been trying to write for a long time, and it's a baptism name poem. Because when I was little, my dad would baptize people sometimes. He's evangelical Christian, and I refused. I didn't, it was too scary. I was scared of the water. And I was scared to take my shirt off in public. This seems very obvious now. Um, So maybe this is it, or maybe it's not its time. It seems in the performing arts very clear that maybe it's not the time to do something. Maybe you have to be a certain age to play King Lear or something. Maybe you have to be a certain age to do certain routines. So maybe this is not the time for the poem, but maybe it is. Hard to say. Once more, not without faith, under your brow and struggling, struggling to speak. Eyes quite like mine, wave crested in a hurriedness of white. A rock cut open like a poem to resonate another's heat. I learn to watch by watching you, mistaking nothing in the wake. We spoke like a kitchen light of the shadows we make. The Pacific held father christening children in it while we played at lizards in the cliff. Vows I shook too much to take. Names which cannot die, but like a world, die ceaseless hereafter. Difficult to speak of violence, beauty harder still. And the violence of beauty often goes unnamed. Still, People wake nearly every day, hold their breath. Excised by language and walking a coast at night, I pass a man throwing back a fish, boys blowing smoke from a lifeguard shack. I had thought the sea a membrane bound to shore, shoals exceptional, puckered through. But the sea is not a surface, it is tombstoneless offers no language to exercise you from you, however we might try. So I walk all night, a coast, and see no limit, or no longer try. (laughs) 
every so often, far right people will will uh, just start retweeting my stuff or tweeting at me or whatever, for all the obvious reasons one can imagine. One can imagine all the obvious things that happen then. And I wrote this one one time after that. Messages on a phone, in a hand, in a sky. There are two threats only. Where do they gather tonight? Encounter is the ground we drowned in stone to arrive upon. The record was a crow picking at seeds in the rough. But where are you tonight, my love? The day was long, my breath heavy with sun. The day, like us, was a record of the disappearance of light, alike in what could have been, but persists as not. The record was wrong, necessarily, but not unnecessary to write. A message does not wake in your hand. A message waits so long in the sky. And this is the newest sonnet, but it may not be the last. But it will be the last for tonight. Into the book of leaves I wrote, it is when I sing only you hear. Into the endless book full of leaves I spoke because I could no longer hear. 2016 is long ago, but with us still. Time is a homotopy, two books, each recording the other, separate but closed. Or, like a jar, a lid atop it. Because sound gains enclosure, I said, I will no longer sing. I said, I will strike each lid of each jar through each house I am most unwelcome in. I will strike my own jar loudest within my room. Because sound is buried into the object that loosed it. Because 2016 is a year let loose into a year. Let's do two more. Why not? Yeah. A note on form. Never having lived among things, but beside forms of things, I no longer look where the city lifts a little further, past houses, oceans, light from a crane breathing, no longer looking the child, hurried beside a mother moving too, too fast at what escapes the grasp of leaves and awnings of leaves, past what is lifted up, whatever word lifted from whatever throat it's lodged, there being only one throat between us, past perception, anything but arrangement, and nevertheless perceiving, as we must, what moves between us, quickening, no longer a roof but atmosphere, precursor and remnant of speech, remaining as it must, perhaps the least effective of our music. Some days I'm like, language is a mistake, guys. You should not have done that. <laughs> Horrible idea. Resistances often seem like only against themselves, themselves, yeah. But music, speech is a is a subcategory of music, I think. This is also untitled, and it mirrors and its look sort of the ones I started with. Preservation is merely compost delayed. A jug burst to ground, any ground, and whose, and after all we put into a mouth, we speak nearly of truth, what waits to be said, and giving, I said, to a room of any but you, 
If I have spoken of trees, I merely and only have meant the gracious indifference of trees, of trees. Thank you.